Hi, thanks for joining me on this tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make paint street lettering in Procreate. So um, in order to do this you do need the latest update which is um, version 4.1. That's because it contains a, uh, a new tool called Warp and this allows us to um, you know, bend and stretch and, and curl textures into shape so it's perfect for lettering and especially this particular effect. Um, so it helps to have some authentic looking textures. I've just released a pack called Paint and um, Pencils and Paint, and this contains like loads of um, handmade high res textures. So to start, we've got um, some lettering here. I'll, I've just brought in a guide that I've um, made earlier and put that on a low opacity um, to use as a reference. So I would suggest using like quite a um, thick stroke just so that you can get the um, feeling of the texture and, and, and get enough of that detail in there. So take your first piece and just turn the opacity down on that. I've got free form selected for the moment and we're just gonna turn this rotate it and just put it into place so it covers the majority um, and even kind, of, even kind of comes over the first stroke here. And then we'll go into warp and just move those edges. And um, it, well, I was gonna say it takes some getting used to, but really it's so intuitive. It's really, really fluid and easy to use. So, um, you know, I mean, there's, it depends how complex of a uh, piece that you're doing but um, you know for something relatively large and straightforward it really is just extraordinarily um, responsive so definitely give it a go um, it's lots of fun so once you've got that first piece in place you can turn the opacity up and just see how it's looking I'll probably actually just kind of move the edges a little bit more something else I want to show you as well is you can turn on this advanced mesh and that just gives you even finer control so you can really get that curve exactly where you want it um, it takes some playing like you know it depends how exact you want to be but for the purpose of this tutorial I want to move quite fast just to take you through the full kind of um, process so we'll go on to our second stroke and twist this into place I just want to turn this up a second just to show you like this streak so there's a lot of detail in these um, textures and for this, just think about how the stroke is made and kind of the direction of the streak itself. Um, and that just adds that other level of realism. So I turn down the opacity on this one, go back to warp and put this in place. Sometimes it's easier to turn off advanced mesh if you're just doing like quite a um, large... Uh, a large scale down or shift or whatever you know straight up and then just turn it back on for those more refined kind of it, it just seems to affect like a, a smaller area so it means that you've got that more control so turn that back up and that's looking great um so next one now you'll see I've chosen colors specifically that kind of work together so I'm using like this pink um, that really works together as a family. So give that some thought when you're choosing which, which textures to use. I would suggest, um, you know, varying them as well and not using just one same piece of um, one same layer, you know, just give a bit of variety to that. So then, yeah, well, my turn on advanced again, just to get that finer control. This is quite a thin, thin piece here, so it takes a little bit of nudging, but that's good enough for the moment. You can always refine later, but you can see that stroke, <clears throat> you know, it, it goes with the flow <clears throat> of how you would form that letter. Frog in my throat, sorry. Um, transform, freeform, into shape, turn down the opacity, back to your arrow tool, back to warp. Turn advanced mesh off for the start, give it a go without. But for this one, when we get the general gist of the curve, I'm actually definitely gonna need to turn advanced back on because I want that to really follow that curve. So that just takes a little bit more control. You see that these blue nodes, are you can pick them up and actually move the angle um, so that little dotted line leads to whichever kind of part, segment it's controlling. 
Okay, cool. So let's turn that back up, see how it's looking. Yep, that looks great. Just check your top area that it kind of, you know, matches up. And I like this jagged edge. It's sort of realistic, you know, it's the way that a paint stroke would look. So that's that's cool to leave as is, but just the, the under strokes, make sure that they're um, agreeing with each other. So we'll spin this around. Now this bit's a bit tricky, and what I've found through a bit of practice is um, it's a good idea to try and get your width pretty close to the, the smallest area. It's okay if that makes the length um, a little smaller than a full wrap at 100%, but um, especially because these paint textures kind of look like you know they're not going to be um, too distorted from stretching, so, so it's not too bad. Um, and what I found as well is if you move this inner curve first you can follow through with each segment afterwards and that will just mean that you're not um, it's really easy to what well, kind of yeah see how it's doing there sort of um, flipping over another segment so yeah if you just move these sort of one at a time you get um, you get it into shape and position a lot easier Okay, so it's okay if it does flip over. It actually ends up looking quite cool sometimes. So you might wanna just experiment and um, you can always undo or just keep a backup of the original texture so that if you don't like what you did, you can redo it really easily. So turning the opacity up is um, showing me that this area is not gonna sort of really work that, um, um, that you can see the background through. So we just wanna stretch that out even more. And this is another place where it's important to consider how the letter would be written. So this, this is coming over this second, so that's correct here. We do want that to overlap um, this understroke and you can do some great, I'll show you in a bit, um, shadow shadowing that just makes that even more realistic. So, so just even, if you can't kind of get that, what you can do as well is um, choose like a pink, oops, oops, oops. Choose like quite a close pink color to um, one of the textures and create a new layer. And I need another brush. In the pack, there's kind of a brush that, that works with this um, quite well. So you can even kind of fill in some of the areas that you would like to look a bit different so you'd like the shape to kind of extend there's no problem with doing that you know it does it does still work it doesn't look that um it doesn't stand out in a bad way and also just to even get it a little bit more blended you can use the smudge tool um just to sort of blend it in but we're going to be overlapping this so so there'll be something over the top of that so don't worry uh, so now we'll turn the opacity down on this last bit and consider where the flick is. So I've got the flick on the end there that I want to be at the end of the letter. So I'm going to turn that around here and then go to warp and I'll get the width on this right first. You just get used to sort of what's going to be the, the best method, um, where to start, whether you want to curve or, or kind of thin, um, get your width right. Okay, and I reckon that this could be a lot better than what I'm doing right now, but um, you know, for the purposes of just showing you quite quickly what you can do with warp, um, you know, this will do. You can play around a bit longer to your heart's content, really, and get that um, looking great. So. We've got the general gist of that curve going on and we can even smudge that a little bit more to make it blend in here. Right, moving on, if you turn off your guide layer and um, we'll add some shadowing now. So add a layer on top of your first stroke here and we're going to select this layer. So just tap on it and choose select. This is just because we want only this area to be um, filled in. So I'm gonna move to an airbrush now. Um, within Procreate standard brushes, there's soft airbrush. So I'll choose that one and I'm gonna choose a black color for my color and turn down the opacity on this layer so it's not like full on black. Now we'll zoom in and I'm just gonna paint in a bit of shadow. 
So that just adds like that real dimension here. So we'll do that again. I'll speed this bit up. Okay, so that gives you some idea of how you can shade and add dimension and just imagining where the light source is so that, um, you know, you get an idea of where those shadows would sit. So I hope I, you enjoyed this tutorial and it showed you how you can use the warp tool. Um, give it a thumbs up below if you liked it and see you next time.